friends. Today I'm going to show you how to make sausage rolls. And one of the great things about sausage rolls is they are customizable. And that just means you can make them the way that you like them. I like my sausage rolls with Swiss cheese and pineapple in them. You may not like that, so you might want to put other things in your sausage roll to customize it for you. Or you might even like yours plain. So I'm going to show you how I like them and then maybe you'll try my way or your own way. To make the sausage rolls, you need frozen raw dinner rolls that have been thawed out but have not risen. You need sausage. I am using turkey smoked sausage, but you need some sort of pre-cooked sausage. And you can make the sausage rolls just like that, plain, and they will be delicious. I am going to put pineapple and cheese, Swiss cheese, in mind. Might do some with cheddar also. You could also do, if you like spicy, maybe you could do jalapenos and cheddar. You can get creative. I've got my ingredients prepped. I cut my fully cooked sausage into about inch and a half to two inch pieces. I have my cheese cut into squares. And I drained my pineapple bits on paper towels and then dab the top. Now we are ready to put our sausage rolls together. To make a roll, I'm gonna take a piece of dough and a rolling pin and I am going to roll this out just about as flat as I can get it. I'm gonna go in either direction. Then I'm gonna take a piece of cheese, a piece of sausage, and then three or four little pieces of pineapple, kind of on either side. Then take one side, fold it over, and the other side folds over, and then the ends, and voila, you have a package to put on baking sheet. Now that all my little bundles are made and put on a baking sheet, I'm going to spray them very lightly with vegetable spray so that when I cover them with some plastic wrap, it doesn't stick. And then I'm going to let them rise for about 30 to 45 minutes. And if you make these, it'll just depend on how warm your kitchen is. My sausage rolls have risen a little bit. They've puffed up some. So I'm going to go ahead and put them in a 350 degree oven. I let my sausage rolls bake for about 20 minutes and I cut one open so you can see the inside. Of course the great thing about sausage rolls is you don't need a plate or a knife. You can just hold them in your hand and eat them. Our story today is The Runaway Dinner by Alan Alberg, published by Candlewick Press. was a boy. Banjo, his name was. Yes, Banjo Cannon. Well, he was a little boy, this boy. Lived in a house, slept in a bed, wore all the usual sorts of clothes, socks and scarves and such. Loved his cat named Mildred and his mom and dad named Mr. and Mrs. And every day, summer or winter, rain or shine, had a sausage for his dinner.
on his own little plate with his own little knife and fork and salt shaker and ketchup at his own little table with his own little chair. Yes, a sausage, a sausage for his dinner. Now, here's the exciting part, the unbelievable part, though it is all true. sunny summer's day, just as Banjo, with his knife in one hand and his fork in the other, was leaning forward and smiling happily at the thought of eating his dinner, the sausage, Melvin his name was, jumped, yes jumped, right up off the plate and ran away. Well then of course, as you might expect, the fork ran after the sausage, the knife ran after the fork, the plate ran after the knife, the little table and the little chair ran after the plate, and Banjo, that hungry little boy, ran after all of them. Actually, if you want the whole truth, he ran after a few others as well. You see, Banjo did not only have a sausage on his plate. That would be silly, wouldn't it? Just a sausage, one measly little sausage for a hungry boy's dinner? No, Banjo also had three fat peas, four baby carrots, and a handful of fries. Yes, and the thing is, of course, they were all on the plate as well. And when Melvin ran off, they, as you might expect, followed him. The peas, as it happened, were all boys, Peter, Percival, and Paul, and the carrots, all girls, Caroline, Clara, Camilla, and Christabel. As for the fries, well, there really were too many to name all of them, though being French, of course, they had names like Francois, Fifi, and so forth. So that's it, the absolute truth, the complete picture, see? Here they are, the whole lot of them, not forgetting Mildred the cat and Mr. and Mrs. and Bruce, the next door neighbor's dog. Nearly did forget him, though he was chasing Mildred actually. All racing down the road. Well, the first thing that happened was the carrots, all four of them, escaped by hiding in a paper bag. Bruce chased Mildred up a tree and a pigeon ate Percival. Melvin, meanwhile, was running strongly on his two little legs. He came to a crosswalk, waited for the walk light, crossed the road, and ran into the park. The next thing that happened was Mr. and Mrs. bought three ice creams a couple of the french fries escaped by sailing away in a toy boat. Au revoir, bon voyage, hurra! And a duck ate Paul. Banjo, meanwhile, was running strongly on his two little legs, and the chair and the table were both running strongly on their four little legs. Actually, that's not entirely true. The little chair in particular was quite out of breath. He had to stop and rest for a while. Only then an old lady came along and sat on him. She was out of breath too. So then of course the little chair was stuck there for a time. Melvin meanwhile was still racing away with the knife and fork close behind and the little plate and Mr. and Mrs. and so forth. Presently, a picnicking family spotted the fork and the knife too and grabbed them. At the same time, a boiled egg named Billy saw what was going on and, in the confusion, ran off himself. A couple of little girls who were skipping on the grass spotted the plate and grabbed her. She was a girl plate, Saskia her name was, and started using her as a frisbee, which as it turned out, wee! the little plate much enjoyed. Well now, there was a pond in the park, 
That's where the toy boat was sailing, and Melvin ran around it. And there was a baseball field, and Melvin ran around that. The rest of the French fries stopped here and sat down to watch the baseball game, actually, and nobody noticed them. By this time, the summer's day was coming to an end, and almost everybody was out of breath. Melvin, that sturdy little sausage, slowed to a stroll, to a dawdle, and finally stopped all together. Whereupon, along came Banjo, that hungry little boy. Oh dear. Ate him! Well, nearly. He would have done, he really would. Only just then along came his hot and bothered poor old mom. No, no, she cried, don't eat that, meaning Melvin, don't eat that, it's been on the ground. The next thing that happened was Melvin seized his chance, ran off again and hid in the long grass, where, as it turned out at that very moment, the baseball, named Marlin, was also hiding. Meanwhile, the athletic little table, urged on by the salt shaker and ketchup, was still racing along. His style was much admired by a number of park benches. On the other hand, Peter, the last of the peas, remember him? Had well and truly disappeared. It was a mystery. He had to be there somewhere. Yes, take a look if you like. See if you can spot him. It was a sunny summer's evening. Home went Banjo, carried high on the shoulders of his poor old dad and his poor old mom. Bruce, the next door neighbor's dog, went home too. And down the tree came Mildred. So there we are, that's the story. Full of such fun, don't you agree? And exciting stuff, yes. Of course, poor little Banjo is still hungry hungrier than ever, in fact. Luckily, hope is at hand. You see, every day or evening, rain or shine, summer or winter, after his dinner, Banjo has a plum pie for his dessert. In his own little bowl, with his own little spoon, and his own little pitcher of cream. Yes, a plum pie. A plum pie named Joyce on this particular occasion for his dessert. So that's all right. Isn't it? <laughs> Do you see Joyce? There's Joyce. Oh, that's such a silly story. <laughs> you know, when I'm reading, a lot of times, one story makes me think about another story that I've heard before. And that's good because it helps me understand what I'm reading. And this story makes me think of The Gingerbread Man. Have you ever read this book? It's a classic. If you haven't, you need to. This version is by Jim Willsworth. And I don't want to give too much away, but there's similar things. These two books have some things in common, and there's things that are different about the stories, too, of course. And if you like The Gingerbread Man, you should try The Cajun Cornbread Boy. And this is by Diane de las Casas. All right, so those are some fun stories, all featuring food that runs away and in some cases can talk. And those are, are fun stories to enjoy. They're silly. <laughs> and that's all the time I have for today. So I'll see you next time.